So to clarify this distinction between a care mark issue and a business related issue, the court emphasized that the care mark doctrine is not a means to hold officers liable for everyday business problems. Instead, the Delaware Chancery Court explained that, quote, at a minimum, a plaintiff pursuing an oversight claim against an officer would need to demonstrate that the officer failed to make a good faith effort to monitor central compliance risks within his or her remit that pose potential harm to the company or others, close quote. The Chancery Court's focus appears to center on the responsibility of board members and officers to respond when faced with allegations of conduct bordering on illegality. Global companies face unprecedented risks and challenges in today's economy. To mitigate these legal and economic risks, companies are rapidly embracing and elevating the importance of robust ethics and compliance programs to promote positive corporate citizenship. On Corruption, Crime, and Compliance, you'll hear from industry leaders and insiders about how to create effective ethics and compliance programs that will mitigate risks and maximize financial performance. Here's your host, Michael Volkov. Welcome, everybody. Michael Volkoff here, bringing you another episode of Corruption, Crime, and Compliance. And today we're still recording in Sicily, heading back to the U.S. for a few weeks and then back out to Sicily. But I wanted to check in on the Caremark cases in Delaware and the Delaware Chancery Court. And what we've seen over the last 10 years is we've seen a market shift from the Delaware Chancery Court chipping away at making board members and boards subject to more liability claims. I mean, it's not an earth-shattering change, but it's a change nonetheless and something to be looked at because in certain cases, what we see now is that the court is willing to deny motions to dismiss, which are usually filed in shareholder derivative suits, trying to hold accountable individual board members. And I think that this trend is likely to continue, and we're going to sort of see the continuing erasure of protections for corporate board members. So there have been a number of seminal cases involving, okay, the Boeing 737 MAX airplane crashes. That was a 2021 decision, very, very comprehensive in discussion of the issue of proper board governance and all of the failures of Boeing to deal with the issues that arose. We also saw in the famous, famous, I mean, famous for us compliance people, Marchand and Barnhill, which was the Listeria outbreak from tainted bluebell ice cream. That was a 2019 case. We've also seen in another case where, you know, when there's health and safety matters that arise, that's where the court seems more willing to hold people accountable. So, Basically, they've upheld the plaintiff's cases against the claims of failing to adequately plead violations of the Caremark standards. And it basically, the Caremark case goes back to 1996. And remember, the oversight duties stem from the well-established duty of loyalty and its subsidiary duty of good faith. To plead a Caremark claim, a plaintiff is required to put forth adequate facts from which a fact finder can make a reasonable inference that the fiduciary acted in bad faith. Now, under Caremark, bad faith can be established when a fiduciary, one, utterly fails to implement any reporting or information system or controls, or two, having implemented such a system or controls, consciously fail to monitor or oversee its operations, which results in a failure to act or attend to a risk or problem requiring their attention or response. Interestingly, last year, the Chancery Court extended the so-called Caremark oversight obligations and governance standards to senior management in the McDonald's case, and that was the McDonald's Corp. shareholder derivative litigation case. So that was 2023. The Delaware Court's decision stands in that case as one of the most significant developments in years because it extended these requirements to senior management. So senior management cannot put their head in the sand and avoid responding to red flags when those come up. In the McDonald's decision, the Delaware Chancery Court confirmed that corporate officers owe a duty of oversight, applying the same logic that justified application of such requirements against corporate board members. 
The McDonald's plaintiffs allege that a senior officer who was responsible for human resources acted in bad faith by ignoring numerous red flags of pervasive sexual harassment at the company, along with his own sexual harassment conduct. So having an HR person himself engaging in sexual harassment certainly raises accountability issues when they're responsible and then ignore red flags of pervasive sexual harassment. So the path now for Caremark cases, I think, is going to continue and is going to hold accountable board members and senior managers for serious oversight and governance failures. In close cases, however, the Delaware court has demonstrated that it remains comfortable rejecting Caremark claims lodged by plaintiffs, usually related to finance issues or non-health and safety where there's been no sort of catastrophic result of their failure. The sea change, however, continues to ensnare those companies and individual board members who fail to exercise basic fiduciary and governance obligations. In these situations, corporate boards and individual members must act when faced with illegal conduct or face serious allegations of bad faith. Such a claim is likely to survive a motion to dismiss under the new strictures outlined by the Delaware Chancery Court. Now, last year, the Delaware Chancery Court rejected motions to dismiss filed against the defendant and individual board members involving alleged governance failures at Walmart, and here's another safety concern, for failing to oversee the distribution of prescription opioids at Walmart stores in violation of federal law. The court cited plaintiffs pleading that the majority of Walmart directors appeared to have knowingly disregarded serious compliance issues arising from Walmart's distribution of opioids. So that, to me, is another instance of bad faith, ignoring legal violations, and then acting in bad faith. And the question is, what happens when it may be a case where the board members ignore a code of conduct violation, and that results in some serious compliance issues arising. The court seems most comfortable when there's sort of these incendiary opioids, plane crashes, tainted ice cream, where people can get seriously hurt, and they have no problem in rejecting, in those cases, the care mark defenses. So, in the first case, by the way, applying the McDonald's standards to corporate officers, the Delaware Chancery Court sustained the dismissal of a motion in the Segway versus Kai case. And this is a case that involves financial oversight and what the court called a business-related issue. So in April of 2015, Segway, a producer of personal mobility devices, we all remember when those came out, was acquired by the Chinese startup Ninebot and maintained its own board of directors and officers. Judy Kai was appointed president in 2015. After the acquisition, Segway's business declined, causing layoffs and ultimately led to the closing of its corporate headquarters in New Jersey. Kai was terminated as president in 2020. After her departure, Segway discovered that there were discrepancies in the financial data Segway provided to Ninebot including, quote, an excess of $5 million in accounts receivable that were not properly recorded and or booked. Segway filed suit against Kai, asserting a care mark claim that she breached her fiduciary duty of loyalty to Segway by, quote, consciously disregarding certain financial discrepancies and, quote, willfully ignored issues in the company's accounts receivable record. Kai moved to dismiss. In a brief decision, the Chancery Court granted the motion. The Delaware Court rejected plaintiff's claims that the president of Segway ignored quote-unquote financial struggles and instead cited the need for plaintiff to plead and support a Caremark claim of a lack of good faith needed to detect, quote, central compliance risks, close quote, within the scope of the officer's responsibilities. So to clarify this distinction between a Caremark issue and a business-related issue, the court emphasized that the care mark doctrine is not a means to hold officers liable for everyday business problems. Instead, the Delaware Chancery Court explained that, quote, at a minimum, a plaintiff pursuing an oversight claim against an officer would need to demonstrate that the officer failed to make a good faith effort to monitor central compliance risks within his or her remit 
that pose potential harm to the company or others, close quote. The Chancery Court's focus appears to center on the responsibility of board members and officers to respond when faced with allegations of conduct bordering on illegality. The amount of evidence triggering a requirement to act is still developing under Delaware Chancery Court decisions, but it is clear that the trend is moving toward holding directors and officers accountable for failures to act in response to indications of potential illegal conduct. On their face, when board members and or officers fail to act in response to such red flags, plaintiffs should be able to plead and support claims of bad faith that usually survive a motion to dismiss. And that's the key term that I think is going to take over is bad faith. Because when there's bad faith exercised by the directors, there's almost an intentional decision, a knowing decision, and a failure to act or taking the wrong decision, you know, making the wrong decision with regard to, you know, stopping potentially illegal conduct. And I think we're getting closer and closer to sort of a, call it a magenta red flag that requires some response and where the board members exercise bad faith and ignore it. In the Boeing case, for example, one of the most significant facts in that case was the failure of the board to even establish a safety committee, even after the first crash occurred on the 737 MAX. So for that reason, the failure of the board to respond, and believe me, there was more than that in the Boeing case beyond just the failure to create a safety committee. There was many more sort of indicators of bad faith where Boeing board members ignored clear safety problems that were occurring and instead focused on the bottom line. It's really just a tragic decision to read about. And I've written about it a lot on the blog, and I feel very strongly that the board members should have been held accountable. Okay, well, that's it, everybody. Thanks for another episode, and we'll see you next week and talk to you soon. If you enjoyed this episode, the best way to support the show is by subscribing on your favorite listening platform. To learn more and connect with Michael Volkov, go to volkovlaw.com. 